Hello and good morning. Welcome to Messiah Episcopal Church in St. Paul, Minnesota for morning prayer. My name is the Reverend Dave Langell. I'm the vicar and priest in charge here at Messiah. And I invite you to join us for the next 20 minutes or so for my personal devotion, morning prayer from the 1928 Episcopal Church Book of Common Prayer. I invite you to do two things this morning. One is to log in to YouTube so we can know who it is that is praying with us and your location. I invite you to share that in the chat window and also to click on the links below the screen. That'll take you to our church's website and also the order of service for today and our scripture readings. Well, let us pause for a moment's silence and center ourselves upon Almighty God. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of thy heavenly grace, saying upon our knees. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders, Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that sinners may turn from their wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and to pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and infinitely believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Vanity. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The psalm appointed the 18th psalm. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my stony rock and my defense my Savior, my God, and my might, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn also of my salvation and my refuge. I will call upon the Lord, which is worthy to be praised, so shall I be safe from mine enemies. The sorrows of death encompassed me, and the overflowings of ungodliness made me afraid. The pains of hell came about me, the snares of death overtook me, in my trouble I called upon the Lord and complained unto my God. So he heard my voice out of his holy temple, and my complaint came before him. It entered even into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked. The very foundations also of the hills shook and were removed, because he was wroth. There went a smoke out of his presence and a consuming fire out of his mouth so that coals were kindled at it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and it was dark under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and did fly. He came flying upon the wings of the wind. He'd made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him with dark water and thick clouds to cover him. At the brightness of his presence as clouds removed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven, and the highest gave his thunder, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. He cast forth lightnings and destroyed them. The springs of water were seen, and the foundations of the round world were discovered. At thy chiding, O Lord, at the blasting of the breath of thy displeasure. He sent down from on high to fetch me, and took me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strongest enemy, and from them which hate me, for they were too mighty for me. They came upon me in the day of my trouble, but the Lord was my upholder. He brought me forth also into a place of liberty. He brought me forth, even because he had a favor unto me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson appointed from the first book of Kings, the twelfth chapter. And Rehoboam sent to Shechem, for all Israel were to come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, 
for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. That they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father, and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, lighter, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people, who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus thou shalt thou say unto them, My little fingers shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did lade you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Here endeth the lesson. The Benedictus. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shalt be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson appointed from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with unholy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen the first epistle under the Thessalonians, 
was written from Athens. Here endeth the lessons. The Jubilate Deo. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his, hand, of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray upon thy knees. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O God, may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always prevent and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, shortly trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen a prayer for all sorts and conditions of God's people. O God, the creator and preserver of all thy people, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of them, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are desired at this time. that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. A general thanksgiving said by all.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. A prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and us promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, that will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Here endeth the order of morning prayer.